Welcome to Night Sky Notebook. My name is Peter Detterlein, and this is what's happening in the skies above for December 2022. We begin by looking at the moon phases. The month begins with full moon on December 7th, new moon right before Christmas on the 23rd. The month begins and ends pretty much the same way with the Moon and Jupiter together, just like last month it was Saturn and the Moon. Look around 10 o'clock over into the western part of the sky about halfway up and you'll see Jupiter and the Moon looking really good. Keep in mind that picture because I want you to remember that when you take a look at the Moon at the end of the month. It's going to be a bit different. Will the moon be larger? Will it be smaller? How close will they be together? The big news for the month is on December 7th. Mars and the moon. The two will be incredibly close to each other. The big question is, will you be able to see Mars separate from the moon? Just looking at it visually, I think you can do it. But the best view is going to be with a pair of binoculars or a telescope. Now, the further north you go, the more Mars is going to disappear behind the moon. And that's going to be an exciting thing, too. Just watching Mars hovering over the lunar surface is going to be really, really interesting. And of course, this also happens when Mars is at its brightest and best for the whole year. Because that next day in the morning, Mars is at opposition. It's opposite the Sun. So when the Sun sets, Mars rises, visible all night long. It's not a great opposition this year. It's not a horrible opposition this year. It's like exactly in the middle between them. But for the next few years for opposition, and remember opposition only happens every two years, Mars is going to be smaller and smaller at opposition as it gets worse and worse. Then it'll start to get better and better until we get a beautiful one in 2035. So we're going to be expecting to see some smaller Mars oppositions in the coming years. Take a look at this one. It's going to be the largest one you're going to have for a while. Of course, we always love the Geminid meteor shower. Technically, it extends from about the 4th to the 16th, but really, December 14th is the peak. And the beautiful thing about the Geminids is you can watch them all night long, and there are a lot of meteors. So this is a really beautiful shower to see. Of course, the problem this year is going to be the moon. So the moon's going to be a bit of an issue as you get into the early morning. And just get in a nice chaise lounge, get a sleeping bag, keep nice and warm, but don't fall asleep. And keep the moon to your back so you don't have the moonlight in your eyes. And you should be fine. You may miss some of the fainter meteors, but you'll definitely get to enjoy the brighter ones. Ah, the first day of winter officially begins December 21st what we call the winter solstice. This is the lowest the sun will be in the sky at noon. Lowest in the sky at noon. For us, where I'm living, it's about 26 and a half degrees altitude. Only a little more than two and a half fists up from the horizon. It is the shortest day of the year. Winter is officially here. Christmas Eve. Head out there right at sunset and you'll be able to see Mercury, Venus, and the Moon making a beautiful triangle. That's going to be kind of neat. The easiest one to see will be Venus. Actually, it'll be the brightest. Mercury will look like a bright star. The Moon is going to be very, very thin, but you'll catch it. I want you to look at the nighttime side of the Moon. It should be lit up. If you can imagine being an astronaut there, you're experiencing what we call Earthshine. 
the brightness of the nighttime side of the moon is from the glow of the earth in the sky, just like you can see your shadow at a full moon. They almost have a full earth there in order to see your shadow at the nighttime side of the moon. So check that out because that's really kind of neat. And if you have telescope or binoculars, that will enhance your view. Make sure you have a low horizon to check this out. The day after Christmas, Mercury has nudged closer to Venus. They're getting ready for their close encounter in a couple days. The moon has gone in the other direction and is now very close to the ringed world, Saturn. Still, look for that Earth shine on the moon. You can still see it now. Definitely check it out. And you need to get out there about 5.15 p.m. for both of those events. December 28th. Mercury and Venus are at their closest. And it's really kind of neat to see the inner planets just connected there. Definitely check that out. Mercury and Venus, it should be very easy to see. Not a lot of people have ever seen Mercury. Venus will help you out. Venus is easy to see. Mercury's that really bright star that's rather close by. December 28th, Jupiter and the Moon. The Moon now a very obvious crescent. At the beginning of the month, it was a quarter moon. Jupiter a little lower in the skies. It's getting closer and closer to the sunset. And finally, for New Year's Eve, we have a lineup of the planets. If you go out about 5.30 p.m., Venus is going to be very low over in the west. And about halfway up is Saturn. And about the same distance from Venus to Saturn is the distance between Saturn and Jupiter. And then you have Mars off into the eastern part of the sky. The moon will be centered right between Jupiter and Mars. So it's really a very, very nice lineup. And if you take your hand and draw a line from Venus to Saturn to Jupiter to the Moon to Mars and back, you are taking a look at what we call the ecliptic. It's the path of the Sun. The planets have to stay close to that path. Sometimes they can be a little bit above, sometimes a little bit below, sometimes right on it. Check that out. That's it for December of 2022. A lot of great items to see in the nighttime sky. Need more? Check out my blog at Night Sky Notebook at blogspot.com. Keep looking up, and I'll see you next year.